You said you lost your father four years ago. Yeah. What have you learned about life from your dad? Mm, that's another another big one. Yeah, because I was very close to him. And uh, it was tough. It was tough. And I was not... I was sort of not ready for it because up until that point, I lived pretending that death does not exist. When my grandparents died, I was already in the US. So it was very convenient. And I couldn't go back. So I, I grieved, but it kind of was a bit abstract for me. I didn't see their dead bodies, you know, I didn't bury them and so on. So I waited till the last <laughs> moment. So my, the first death in my life was my father like of lo really close loved ones. And I was absolutely devastated. We, you know, he was such an amazing cre creature, such an amazing human being. He was the kindest, the smartest, the most funny, just <laughs> really funny and just really fun to be with, you know? This is what I miss, obviously. I mean, I would just love to hang out with him. So, and then suddenly he's not there. So it was tough, but it kind of uh, changed my perspective. You miss him? I miss him tremendously. I miss him tremendously. But I, in a way, I learned that he never left me in some I mean, it sounds so, ugh. words are so, you know, like they are, um, they cannot, you cannot express in words this, what I'm trying to say. But. Um, Do you carry him with you? Yeah. But, and in some sense, I always did. And, and, and I. I, I saw that, that it's always been, um, it was really, uh, we were one in some sense, you know, like we were, but there was this experience of two, two people being together and that I missed tremendously. But he gave me so much and I, you know, let me, let me tell you one aspect of it, for instance. When he was a kid, his father was sent to Gulag on bogus pretenses, right? So he, when he was 16, he applied to university. He wanted to become a theoretical physicist. By the way, my love for theoretical physics was to a large extent because of that. And he was not accepted, even though he was brilliant, because he was the son of the enemy of the people. And he kind of broke him this experience that he didn't care when he was, you know, he went to a technical school and he didn't really care. That's my take on it. And then he ended up in this, in this, in this little provincial town, and he thought he would escape from it as soon as possible. And then he met my mother, and they fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I am sort of the product, the product of that, you know, <laughs> of physics. But man. then, what I learned is that because he was not able to overcome that specific experience. It fell to me to do it. And if I didn't, my son or my daughter would have. I think that that was one of the things I learned. That it was not by chance. That about the same age, for slightly different reasons, I was subjected to the same kind of unfairness and cruelty. And I, in some ways, I, I feel like I did it for him also. I always, because he was also always so proud of me. I was so happy. And I was, I had this tremendous gift Twice, I was invited by American Mathematical Society to give these big lectures, twice. It was in 2012 and in 2018. And both times they were in Boston. <laughs> it could be anywhere in the US. Mm -hmm. Both times it was in Boston, walking distance from my parents' place. So he could be there in my mom as well. Mm -hmm. And that was such a gift that he was beaming, you know, like uh, seeing me on the stage. Like, oh. So, <laughs> you know now that he's no longer here and it's just you well I still have my mom I still have my sister yeah but as a man yeah there's some aspect that it's mm. um, that it does hit you hard um, are you afraid of your own death do you think about your death are you afraid of it I have a certain conceptual view of life and death today which is informed by my experiences, in particular going through my father's death. And that is something which cannot be uh, conceptualized, like that experience, like you cannot give it to somebody. One thing like I will say is that I felt that what it was, it was actually love totally exposed, like mm. naked, 
And you try to throw, it is so acute. So being facing that love is incredibly painful because it's so intense. When the person is alive, we, we have conversation, we have words, we have some actions, we have some stuff is going on, and it puts a filter. So you, we rarely actually feel love in its totally, completely pure, unadulterated state. But when a person dies, it's there. And it's staring at you, and no matter what you do, you cannot turn away. Like, I tried to, it's like, almost I felt like I want to throw a blanket over it. Yeah. You, it, it burns, like, psh, immediately, like, boom, gone. It's there. Live through it. And I, I was, I kept saying to myself, just live through it, live through it. That's how you, and that's how you know, also learn what is love, for example. What is it really? What is love? What is life also? Because I was completely... I had no idea. And and then you kind of learn that, okay, so maybe it's not quite, <laughs> there's more to it. There, more, there is more to it. There's more to this experience than what can be put in a concept or in a, in a, in a sentence, in a, in a maybe poetry or music uh, can do some justice to it. Mm -hmm. But if so, then my own life has that component, has that dimension which is beyond anything I can say about it, you know? And even though I love this, being this, uh, playing this role, I love it. Uh, and I kind of, I, it kind of makes me feel different about all kinds of difficulties that arise because it's almost like I want to enjoy it because that's what being human is. It's being, it's being ter terrified, it's being frustrated, it's being self-loathing sometimes. It's not knowing, but also being joyful mm -hmm. and just like, ah, let's just enjoy it. Kind of all of it. Like, that's why you came here for in some sense, you know? It's like not trying to run away from things, but kind of trying to just live through them and appreciate. So the biggest thing is gratitude in some sense. It's just gratitude. So thank you for letting me play. Yeah. Gratitude for every single moment, even if it's dark, even if it's yes, loss. Yes, and heart, that's why I am everything. so. People around me, they all say that it's a total doom and gloom, and the world is ending. And I'm like, first of all, <laughs> that's how you see it. Okay, yes. that's not the only point of view. But also, even if it is, like that's your challenge. Like, what are you going to do about it? Stop complaining about other people. Do something yourself. How can you make it a better world? You know. And I think all of that starts with just a gratitude for the moment, to, to be able to play this game. Yeah, how beautiful it is. What, uh, we've talked about love, but let me ask, what role does love play in this whole game, in the human condition? It's like the glue, you know, it's like for me, it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and it's not because people say love is like um, for a human being, like a romantic love, yeah. which is a huge uh, component of it, obviously, because it's so, so beautiful to be able to, to express it in this way. But it could be love for what you do, for your passion for something, you know, and, uh, or, uh, or love for for your for your friends, for instance, or love. It doesn't have to be, and so, in some sense, that's <laughs> that's what it's all about. And ultimately, because l living without love, it's kind of bland, boring, and so. And I don't think it's possible for science to explain exactly what it is. You can do a evolutionary biology perspective. You can talk about some kind of sociology perspective, psychology perspective, but the experience, the experience intensity, itself. where you forget, where time, we're reminded, becomes an illusion, yeah. and everything just freezes. Oh my God. And then uh, it's kind of beautiful and painful to hear you say that when you've experienced love, the deepest is when you lost it. Yes, but in a sense, you can say that you could not have one without the other. I could not have that deep connection with my father, like really on so, so many levels. If there weren't a moment, that's how I see it. And I'm not trying to say that's how everybody should see. For instance, I respect Ray Kurzweil. I respect and I feel, and I almost like I get, I, I feel good bumps right now. I feel that desire to reconnect, even if it is in the form of a, you know, a computer program, let's be honest about yeah. it. I find it to be very moving. 
I find it very moving. And I understand because he actually didn't have a chance to spend much time. You know, I think he was 16 or 17 when he's, he was a teenager. His dad died. I was lucky because my father died. I was much older. I've had so many moments with him. But that's not my thing. Like, I think it is a feature. It's not a bug. And it sounds crazy. Like, yeah. I would love, I would give anything to have him or here right now. Yeah. Right now, I, everything I have, I give it away right now. Yeah. Where do I sign? Yeah. Just to see him for one hour. I promise you, I will. But... I also know that I w- it, it, then I'll still lose him or I will die or whatever. You know, so like that thing. So what is, why is it so worse to just hold, hold on to, holding on to it? Why? Why are we holding on to this? And I am the first sucker. I'm the first one to hold on. <laughs> but I'm questioning it now. I'm like, is there another way to approach life where you just, you know, how Buddha, it's like, just let it go. Enjoy and let it go. Enjoy and let it go. Is it possible? Accept the paradox of it. Well, like, ask me in, in a couple of years, you know? <laughs> I will report. But I think that it's, but to my mathematical mind, yeah. it sounds like a very interesting idea, to be honest. Because to me, the idea of holding is an, sounds like an impasse. Because no matter, in all my experience, and if you look in history, every time somebody's holding, you know, it's how they said in the matrix, whatever has a beginning has an end. It's like, you cannot go around it. If you have a beginning, you will have an end. So then might as well just enjoy it and not worry too much about extending it longer. That's how I see it now, but maybe tomorrow will be something else. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the roller coaster of life, the paradox of life. Right. Edward, you're an incredible human being. I've been a fan for a long time. Thank you for writing Love and Math. Thank you, thank you for being who you are being uh, both uh, one of the greatest living mathematicians and still childlike wanderer of the uh, exploring the how this whole world works, the, the nature of the universe. And thank you so much for speaking with me today. This is amazing. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.